Whether it's hot wings, hot sauces, you name it, anything with spices needs peppers. And of course, weather plays a key role in that. Why are we here in South Carolina for the Carolina Reaper? But whether or not you can take the heat, let's figure out what it takes to make it. York County, South Carolina is home to some super hot temperatures and super hot peppers. This is where they grow, harvest, and ship the world's hottest chili peppers. This is Carolina Reaper. That's the Guinness World Record pepper right now. Or at least it was when we filmed this, but more on that later. And if you're a heat seeker, you're familiar with Ed Curry and some of his creations. I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> well, pepper season is no small feat. Lasts many months throughout the year. It starts in January, February, March, all right here in some of these greenhouses. We have six greenhouses here. We start in around March, seed every seed by hand. I think we had 600,000 plants this season, and then we'll have all of them full, plant into the field, reap, and just keep doing it all the way into June. But the hotter it gets, the more moisture they need. Once in the fields, keeping up with the heat becomes top priority. Underneath each of those row covers is drip line irrigation. So the hotter it gets, if we watered a half hour in the spring, we might water an hour in the summertime. While some studies show that hotter, drier conditions can provide a boost to the level of capsaicin, the compound responsible for that signature kick, Ed says, it's genetic makeup that makes his peppers world famous. The difference between Sweden and the Yucatan Peninsula, on average, is less than 200,000 scova. And okay. when you're talking about 1.5 million for a reaper, that's not that big a difference. That's not that big a difference. We happen to have the perfect climate right here in South <laughs> Carolina. Over the last 40 years, heat accumulation during the growing season has been on the rise. And even though that can be bad news for certain crops such as corn, rice, and peaches, hot chili peppers can withstand hotter temperatures. Peppers are a little bit more heat tolerant, but for an extended period of time, they do kind of shut down and it's hard for them to absorb nutrients. If they're not absorbing any water when they're shutting down, they're not absorbing the nutrients, they're not absorbing anything. They're just kind of stagnant. Although since 1970, the U.S. has also seen an uptick in hourly rainfall intensity nationwide. And while that can bring the risk of fungus to many crops, hot chili peppers are actually more resistant to those infections. They're very tolerant to, like, fungus. They're not as bad as other crops in that way. Okay, so you're probably thinking to yourself, what weather worries does Ed have? My main concern is hurricanes. Winds will blow a plant over uh, if the stem breaks your duck. These rows, if you notice, they're kind of contoured and everything's contoured down on a slope. You see where the plants died? Yep. Okay, towards the bottom of the slope. They got too much water, they died. The second concern is the frost. Like one year, we had just started harvesting October 1st. And the second week of October, we got a killing frost. Killed them all. Wow. Okay. So a killing frost ruins our fields. But once the peppers have made it to harvest, they end up back here to be processed. And picking peppers is nothing to twist your tongue to. On any given day, we, we pick between 10,000 and 35,000 pounds of peppers. But just how hot is the world's hottest pepper? 1.642 million Scoville heat units. And wow. that's a low average. Now for comparison, this jalapeno pepper, which was really hot, was just 3,000 Scoville heat units. And for us hotheads, some good news. Ed and the team have just unveiled the world's next hottest pepper, Dub Pepper X, that will torch even more tongues. And that's sure to leave you sweating no matter what time of year.